these Barney Fife laws are preventing me and you down the road from exercising our Second Amendment rights as it was seen and thought of by our founding fathers in our Bill of Rights and our Constitution. All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here, checking out, sitting out here at the range, just finished up shooting this uh, CMMG Banshee, as well as doing some uh, <laughs> some practicing with the old Atlas Titan there. Uh, so we're talking about the Washington upcoming gun control uh, bills that are getting ready to go up for a vote. So anyway, I got an email from a gentleman named Brad, and he writes this, Washington State is looking to pass a number of gun control bills this session. Three of these bills, SB 6077, 6288, and 6292, passed out of committee last week. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Here's a list of, with a brief summary of each of the potentials. Firearm Policy Coalition has a good compilation on their website. I'll tell you what, Craig does some great work. Uh, We'd really, greatly appreciate all the help and coverage we can get. All of you pro 2A YouTubers do a great job covering stuff and spreading the word, which I personally thank you for. Thank you, and you know what? We do what we can, but maybe not enough. I know that your time and that of others has taken up recently with Virginia and now Oklahoma. You're absolutely correct. Virginia is about the most sickening thing I've ever seen because, especially Oklahoma, for God's sakes. But, uh, you know, here's the whole thing. Virginia and these other states, like New Jersey... Uh, New York, Illinois, Baltimore, uh, now Washington, California is a lost cause. But what they do is they can get these huge groups of people to, in these small cities, these small condensed areas, and they get a lot of, through gerrymandering, they are able to pr get a lot more seats than the outruing rural areas. And what that does is it basically turns that uh, either the House or Senate blew. And the only saving grace is that there's enough votes, possibly, that you're able to retain the gubernatorial seat through uh, a Republican or someone who is pro-2A. Now, because as of late, a lot of people don't even think that Republicans are pro-2A. So anyway, uh, that's how it happens. And then all of a sudden, they've got the vote, they have the governorship, and they can create whatever laws are most popular in this small area versus the entire state. And it's pretty sick. And I've said this before, it's just like the Hunger Games, guys. Um, you've got the big city, the capital city, ruling everything. And then you've got these other rural areas, and they, they, at, at the end of the day, they are there to serve the big cities. And that's it. And I had one guy say, well, you know what? The big cities make all the money, so there. And I'm saying, fine. Uh, you consume the most money. You have the biggest homeless population. You have the most drug addicts. You have the most uh, handout individuals who live in the big city. So, yeah, you may make the most money, but you consume the most. Think of it that way. So, anyway, let's talk about this. So, uh, uh, the House. HB 1068 bans high-capacity magazines above 10 rounds. HB 1286 bans semi-automatic firearms in all magazines over 10 rounds. HB 1315 implements expensive training requirements and fees for concealed pistol licenses. HB 1346 bans the sale of ammunition to individuals under 21. HB 1374 repeals state pre preemption law. HB 1530 implements gun-free zones at daycares, libraries, and public parks. I have a real bad problem with all these, but I especially have the one at public parks because uh, that's when people at, at times are very vulnerable uh, I won't go to the park without a hand cannon. <laughs> That's one of my biggest things. Uh, HB 2240 bans possession, sale, use, or transfer of all magazines over 10 rounds. HB 2241 bans semi-automatic firearms and all magazines over 10 rounds. 2467 statewide excise sales tax, trade and transfer on all firearms. Uh, 2519 background checks for ammunition, licensing of all ammunition sellers. Okay, so what they're basically doing is they're taking the bullet points or the talking points from California and Bloomberg, and they're trying to turn them into law. Next thing you know, why don't they just ban guns? I mean, just go ahead and do it. I guess possession and ownership of a 30-round mag is, a, uh, I guess, deemed a uh, felony charge or something of that nature. I don't know. All right, here's some Senate bills. They have 5062 bans high-capacity magazines over above 10 rounds. They might as well scratch that one because they'll run it through to the House. Senate Bill 5174 implements expensive training, requires, good God, 
5340 band semi-automatic firearms and all magazines over 10 rounds. Am I drooling? Or am I about to spit up? I don't know. Banned semi-automatic firearms. So everything I'm out here shooting would be banned in the state of Washington. We, I know there's got to be enough area out there outside the big cities where people own and require the ownership of a semi-automatic firearm, which constitutes, what, 75% of the firearms out there. I know that I may have a couple revolvers, but that's it. Everything I have is semi-automatic. Implements gun-free zones at daycare, libraries, and public parks. Bans semi-automatic firearms and blah, blah, blah. Bans possession, sale, or use transfer of all magazines over 10 rounds. Creates the Office of Firearms Violence Prevention. You know, it'd be really cool is if they would try to go after the criminals who actually are causing the problem versus, hey, if we eliminate all this stuff, then that'll eliminate the problem. It's not even logical. It's not, it's, that is, it breaks my mind to figure out why in the hell they're trying to do this other than what they're doing is they're trying to get the firearms out of law-abiding citizens' hands because they feel for some reason you have the potential down the road you are going to become a criminal. Or, wait a minute, for God's sakes, if you leave a gun in your car and somebody steals it, or if they sell a gun in that state and it's taken to somebody else's like they're doing in Virginia right now, they're trying to say that they want to do the one gun a month thing because it works to prevent firearm sales in New York illegally. Mandates potentially expensive, time-consuming, or hard to obtain training for concealed license. Uh, more bills pending. State weight firearm and ammunition taxes. Uh, background checks and waiting periods on purchase of ammunition. For the love of God. And again, why don't they just ban ammo? They can't do that because what will happen is, is they can't ban firearms because that will event, it does violate the Second Amendment right. But what they can do is they can limit you to, I don't know, the Barney Fife rule. Why don't we just call it Barney Fife law? Uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. We'll just call it the Barney Fife law from here on out. More Barney Fife laws. Because what's Barney Fife? He's allowed to carry a gun. If it can't be loaded, it can't be a semi-automatic, and he's allowed to have one bullet. This is the shit that just chaps my ass every single day, man. And a lot of people out there are just sitting around saying, when are we going to take up arms and hang these people and everything else? It's not quite that simple. But what we can do is we can motivate people who would normally not vote to go out and vote because those individuals who didn't vote or used to vote Democrat also have a gun. And if you're okay with this BS because you're a Democrat or you're voting left wing, then this is your fault. And I hope you enjoy knowing that down the road, your deer rifle, because your fudness is getting in the way of common sense, is going to be turned into a military sniper rifle. Because all it's going to take is one person to do something like that, and the Dems will jump all over it, and you know they will. I can sit here and read all the different laws and everything else, but guys, let me tell you something. we got to get out. We've got to come. Here's the thing. The other side is better at getting people to go out and vote. They're, they've got buses lining homeless people up with no IDs. For some reason, you can go out and vote without an ID because it's your right to vote. But for the love of God, you got to produce your, your left nut to buy an ammo or anything else. Now, this is just me ranting and raving, but I'm about sick of this shit. But the way you can beat it, and a lot of people are going to disagree with me, and I'm fine with that. Especially that guy named Mike Cunt. I mean, Mike Hunt or Mike Hunt, Mike Hunt. You wonder why your uh, comments always get blocked. <laughs> YouTube blocks them, man. With a name like that, everybody gets blocked. <laughs> anyway, but what I'm saying is, we got to beat him at the ballot box. Because that's where it's going to happen. It's not going to happen by going down and shooting up a place or doing something crazy or stupid just to prove a point because the only thing you're going to do is end up dead. But what you can do is pick up and go door to door and tell people that them not voting is creating BS laws like this to, that to some people it's common sense. And that's the part that just blows me away. These Barney Fife laws are preventing me and you down the road from exercising our Second Amendment rights as it was seen and thought of by our founding fathers in our Bill of Rights and our Constitution. Because those guys would be rolling over right now. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Hanover Down so support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform who fight for our Constitution and our Bill of Rights.
is it was written by our founding fathers. I'm out of here. Y'all be good.